My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop and this is another bike tech video and this is about why gearbox? Why do we have gearboxes? What do they do? It's a big heavy box, full of gears, a gearbox. You know, what the hell do we need one for? So in a previous video, you can see the link here, I did a brief explanation of what power bands were and there's another explanation video here for how horsepower and torque work and what does it all mean. So where we left off with the um, power band video is that we had a power band curve pretty much like this which is your horsepower and RPM. Now it's not torque and RPM because we're using RPM here which means that we have a function of, ta we have a function of time so it's horsepower and not torque just to make it all nice and pretty and what have you. So the best way to describe this that I can think of and to avoid the complications of uh, stiction and inertia and resistance to moving uh, from zero, you imagine that your bike has to start, is, is already moving, but it has to go from 10 mile an hour to 30 mile an hour, with an, which is an increase of 20 mile an hour. And your engine can do this, so your engine increases your speed like this, from 10 to 30 mile an hour. This is no gears, this is just what your engine can do. This is an engine without a gearbox. Fucking plane. <laughs> so from 10 to 30 mile an hour, a 20 mile an hour increase in speed, the engine can do that entire range with no gears included, just the engine running from its, you know, a thousand RPM to let's just say 5,000 RPM. This is what it can do. Now to bring the whole gear thing into it and if you haven't seen the very basic explanation of how gearboxes work there's a video here which kind of explains this diagram I know it looks like tits but it's not these are two discs representing gears we'll just say that this engine has a one-to-one -one gear ratio so the engine is powering this at just say a thousand rpm and this is attached to the rear wheel and that's also doing a thousand rpm we cross all the knots off and we get a one-to-one -one ratio wonderful that will take us from 10 to 30 mile an hour a 20 mile an hour increase and we'll just say for instance we'll just say for simplicity we'll just call that 20 a unit of 20 so we want to go faster we want to go faster than 30 mile an hour that's what the first motorcyclist said to himself and we've hit a problem straight away and the problem that we've hit is that we've fallen out of our power band well, now we're now going at 30 mile an hour, but the engine's just lost its chuff. That's it, it's really screaming along. We're not going to get any more out of it. So, what we can do is we can employ a gearbox to help us get above this 30 mile an hour speed limit. So what we do is we employ a exchange torque for speed gear setup, where the driving gear is bigger than the, small, uh, the driven gear. So you've got to think about like a push bike, you know, you've got your cogs and you set your derailleur and all that nonsense. So we'll just say that this is a 1 to 2 ratio. Every time this one turns around all the way around once, this little bugger has to turn around twice. Now these aren't proper ratios, This is an, um, but it doesn't matter because I'm just explaining how the principle works. So now we've got this gear ratio, we're already going 30 mile an hour. So what we can do... Is we can rub this out. I have to step in the way. 30. We'll do 50. So we've still got an increase of 20, but we're going from 30 now to 50 because we've changed gear ratio. So we're back with our brake horsepower and RPM graph with our power band. And the way the universe works is that if you're moving at 30 mile an hour, it's as if you're staying still. It doesn't matter. Now that we're moving 30 mile an hour, we're going to continue to go 30 mile an hour forever. And then if you, so it's like starting at naught again. So your engine RPM drops again, and you get back on the power, you push yourself all the way from 30 to 50 with a unit of 20, and all is good. So what we do is we go from that speed to that speed with our power band, and then we go from that speed to that speed with our power band and so on and so on and so on and eventually if we've got enough gear sets we'll get to the speed of light and then physics says sorry you're gonna to have to just stop at the speed of light 
So that's how a gearbox goes. If you just keep on adding a ratio in there, you can just keep on going on and on and on and resetting because you're already carrying this speed. And just as long as you make jumps of just say 20 units, 20 miles an hour, use for our example, you can just keep on going forever. But there's more to it than that. From the example I've just given you, there is no stopping us. We could just go on forever. But obviously we all know that if you get on I don't know, GSXR 1000 or something, it's going to get to 160 and 70 and shit out. Why is that? Well, we have our units of 10 to 30 mile an hour, which our engine pushes by 20 units. However, every section of this we do, there is also 5 units of friction and 10 units of air resistance. And we're going to say that our engine, these are arbitrary units, we're going to say our engine has 70 units of power, of stuff, of push. So we've got 70 going this way, that's what we get, that's our equals. But we've got 5 pushing back and we've got 5 pushing back. The problem with the friction and the air resistance is that they are accumulative. So we have our 20 units going from... 10 to 20, uh, to 10 to 30, and now we're going 30 to 50. And we've got our minus 5 from our original 10 to 30, and our minus 10 from our original 10 to 30. Now when we go 30 to 50, you'd think that, well, it's going to be just another minus 5, but like I said, it's accumulative, which means we've got to add the friction from this set as well, and because air resistance is 20, uh, doubled, we've got to double that again. And like I say, these numbers are just arbitrary, it's just to get into your head. These aren't the ratios and the actual units you need to know. But all of a sudden you can see that we've got 70 and we're minus 30 now, where before we were minus 15. So we've doubled the amount of resistance. The reason why friction and the air resistance doubles is because you've got to remember that we're now going faster. We're going from 30 to 50, which when we were going, say, from our 10 to our 30, we'll just say we're covering one mile a minute, right? It's not that, but let's just say it's one unit of distance covered. Now we're going 30 to 50, you call that one and a half, two. You can just call it two. Like I say, it's an arbitrary number. So now we're going to uncover twice the friction because we're covering twice as much road and twice the air resistance because we've got to plough through twice as much air. Again, you go to 50 to 70, this is now 15, this is now 40, at uh, 30, sorry, bloody 40, can't even count. This is now 30, we're up to 45, so we're well above 50% of the engines, what the engine has to give in push. And this is why eventually you get to a high number, I think you get to 110 on this and and these numbers, these negative numbers of friction and air resistance, reach 70 and basically it's pushing you back as resistance just as much as you can push forward. Which means that you just retain that speed and that is your top speed. And there is one thing that's right about this, is the re not the relationship, but air resistance is a lot more, a lot more resistance it is air resistance than friction. The friction coefficient between your tyre and the road is remarkably low compared to air resistance. So how do we decide how many gears there should be in a gearbox? Why isn't the 3? Why isn't the 14? Why isn't the 6? It's quite simple really. You've got your speed which accelerates like this and then you just stop. Which I tell. You just stop accelerating, that's as fast as you've got, your top speed. and you can decide, as a manufacturer, how many gears you want to put in your gearbox. The size considerations, weight considerations, cost considerations, and there's also the torque curve, your, um, not your torque curve, your power band. So what can your engine actually manage? So what they do is literally, they just go like that. And go, all right, one, two, three, four, five, we've got five gears. And then they'll just stick five gears in your gearbox. 
Um, it has now become a thing to be trendy to have six. But you could put a five-speed gearbox in a Yamaha R1, R1 and as long as the sixth gear drive is the same as the fifth gear and the first gear is the same as first gear, you'll just have to divide the ratios up between three gears instead of four. It'll handle ever so slightly differently, but you will get the same acceleration in the beginning, you will get the same top end speed. Right then, I hope that's clear. I can see some comments coming on this one. It's a very dubbed down, simplised version of why we have gearboxes. I will go into a lot more detail with some more videos. Any other ideas, please stick them in the what is it. If you like, I've got a lot of outtakes because this is a pain in the ass because I get tongue tied. If you like the outtake videos, please put an outtake comment or whatever below. I'll stick them up. If people don't want to see them, I'll stop wasting my time putting them up. Any road, I'll uh, see you in a bit.